This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. <laughs> That's how my grandkids are. Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Mass here at St. Paul's Chapel in Canfield, Ohio. Today is January 23rd, the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for this Mass will be Father Matthew. Please rise. We gather together to sing the Lord's praises, to worship the Good morning. We welcome all of you who ventured out this morning in the weather to join us here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, as well as those who are staying home and will be joining us via our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. As was mentioned, today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's also Word of God Sunday, which was proclaimed a couple of years ago by our Pope Francis. And so as we come together, we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest and on earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, 
he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll said all, so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher than the other people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that they all, so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the Lord, of the law. He said further, go, eat rich food and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, 
and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Or nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be the weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that are considered less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety. Whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now, you are Christ's body, and individually, parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. All are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you lord since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word 
have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday at this time, we were waiting for our 12 inches of snow to arrive, and I told you everything was wonderful in our house, but I was wrong. On Sunday afternoon, we lost our water, so we have been out water for the whole week, and we've been having people come in and look and search and try to find out what's going on, but you gotta remember, the building is almost as old as I am, and my pipes don't work, so I know these pipes don't work. So um, hopefully they'll get there sometime this week and we can at least move forward. But we still have heat, but we had to do some re-rigging to make sure that maintained. In the church this week is uh, the Word of God Sunday. It was proclaimed several years ago by Pope Francis. So in the back of the chapel, you're gonna find a book on the Acts of the Apostles, a book we published a number of years ago. It's a nice reading and it has some gorgeous pictures and maps and some commentary. So there are free for you to pick up. Uh, you may not wanna read it right now. My encouragement is you take a copy and read it during the season of Easter, because in Easter we go through the Acts of the Apostles. So that would be a good time to have that little book uh, nearby and to read it. So it was a reflection upon it. But in today's first reading from the prophet Nehemiah, he talks about Ezra and Nehemiah who come before the people of God and proclaim the Torah, proclaim the word of God, their teaching, their law, what it was all about because people had come back from uh, exile and so they were in disarray with those who had remained behind and so there were some conflicts, there were some difficulties. The temple had been uh, broken down a little bit and so they had to repair themselves. And so Ezra says, well, we're gonna get the people to understand what their relationship with God is all about and so they read the word of God. And it said the people spend almost the whole day doing it. And as I read that, I said, I wonder if we would gather for the whole day and just sit here and listen to the word of God proclaimed to us. Probably not. But they were because it was so important and they got excited about it and they began to worship. So we are reminded how important the word of God is for us. In our congregation, we have our constitutions and directory. This is what governs what we say and do. It talks about our community life. It talks about our spirituality. It talks about our ministry. It talks about the vows. It talks about the government that we have in our regions and province and general governments and what have you. And so this is what we get when we're novices so that we pray and reflect upon it over the year. And then this is what we profess that we're going to follow when we make our profession the vows. And we are asked to read this publicly aloud for our members uh, throughout the year. Now, I can't say that we really do that, unfortunately, but we do hopefully read it as an individual and how important it is. Another document I have is a little book I received a couple years ago, The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States of America. A nice little book that you can put in here, and you might want to get a copy of that. 
because everybody's arguing about the Constitution these days, so you might want to read it and find out exactly what was being said in there. So it's how important those documents are. So for us, the Bible is very important. So read the Bible. Take it off your shelf. Take it off your coffee table. If you've got your personal copy, uh, read it, highlight it, meditate upon it, and let it speak to you. You also need to read the catechism. What is the teaching of the church so that we know what we profess and what we believe and what we understand? Maybe you pick up the exponent in the back of church today. We give it to you every two weeks, and you can read what the bishop has to say about this diocese and, and things going on. Maybe you read the encyclicals of the Holy Father and his teaching and the things that he gives. You can go online and get apps to read all of these things and do all of these things that you can carry it with you if you don't want to carry the book. And so it's a maintaining the presence of the Spirit, and it gives us the energy of what we need to proclaim the gospel message. In today's second reading is talking about all of us being the body of Christ and how we are all united together and how we support one another. And if one of us is suffering, another person is suffering. As one of us is rejoicing, all of us are rejoicing because we are a community. We are the people of God. We are the body of Christ. And so we reflect, what if we are, are we the eyes where we can see the presence of God, where we can see the needs of other people? Do we have ears that we can hear and see what's going on? And do we hear the word of God proclaimed? Do we have a mind that we know that we can speak the truth and give out the true facts of what the teaching of our church is all about? Do we have our feet that means we're going to go and walk and carry this message wherever we go, in our workplaces, in our homes, and in our families, and our relationships that we have? Do we have hands that bring healing, that bring comfort, that fold in prayer? And one of the things I read about was interesting. He says, are you the muscle of the body that you're giving strength to the church and give it the vitality that it needs? Are you the red blood cells that give it the vigor and the energy it needs? Are you the white blood cells that keep infection, keep error, keep uh, things that are wrong from coming into our church and into our lives? And so we are the body of Christ. We are supporting one another. We are encouraging one another that we are proclaiming the gospel message because all of us have a mission. A mission to live out the gospel message. A mission to proclaim the gospel message. Jesus came into the synagogue at the beginning of his ministry and reads from Isaiah that he has been called to go out and bring uh, uh, salvation to others, to visit the poor, visit the sick, lift people up, give them the spirit, give them the presence of the Lord. And that is our mission, that as well. So as the body of Christ, use whatever part of the body we may be, whatever tools we have, use all the resources that are available to us so that we can be the strong persons that we are to proclaim the gospel message. So on this Word of God Sunday, as we continue to move into this new year that is upon us, let us be knowledgeable of our faith. Let us be knowledgeable of the Word of God. Let us know what our Holy Father and our bishops and other leaders of the church are calling us to so that we can proclaim the gospel message and bring all of us closer in our faith and in our lives to God and to one another. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We call upon the name of the Lord in this assembly today as we call to mind our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. For the church, that we may recognize our identity as members of the body of Christ and manifest the good news in our lives, our families, and our workplace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater attention to God's word, that we may recognize the words of scripture as sources of spirit and life that will help us live more fully and faithfully each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families experiencing divorce, that God will guide them through the difficult times, help them to respect one another and to care for their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the homebound, that they may know God's healing presence and entrust themselves and their caregivers to God's loving care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are sick, that God will heal all who are ill, bring an end to the pandemic, and give strength and courage to all healthcare workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who are suffering from the bitter cold and storms of winter, especially those who are homeless, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as, as we pray this Mass, let us remember Ivan Luxish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, look with mercy on your people as we offer our prayers to you. Grant them according to your will and comfort all those in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. 
He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now with his, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us turn and offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for being here with us at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, as well as those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. We thank our musicians and our reader. Please pick up a copy of the Exponent, a copy of the Acts of the Apostles, and please be safe going home. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen.